Alright, Mr. Nilen here. Welcome back to Lord of the Rings Total War for Remastered for Total War Room Remastered. Alright, Total War Room Remastered is a game released in 2021 in May and it's, it's a remaster of Room Total War and Room Total War Barbarian Invasion and Room Total War Alexander. Uh, I believe Room Total War was released in 2004, Barbarian Invasion in 2005 and Alexander in 2006. And the original mod, uh, Lord of the Rings Total War for Room Total War Alexander was first released in 2007. With the final release, final official release, released in 2013. And then there have been sub mods released in 2018 and in 2021. Okay. And I'm playing the remastered version of the mod on the remastered version of the game, of course. We tried to fight this battle previously, but for some reason. This army was not under AI control, so I'm not used to this UI. The game crashed when I exited the battle to return to the main menu, so the prior episode was forced to end there, otherwise I would have loaded the save and played the battle immediately. Let's assault. Fight this battle again, so you can see here, AI cannot be disabled, this army will be under your direct AI control disabled, this army will be under your direct command. I don't want that. So I need to uncheck this before a battle. I thought automatically that they would be AI control they were strong. Now they will be AI controlled. <coughs> we can fight a night battle too. No, we have no option here. Can't click here. Okay, sometimes you can fight a night battle. It would fit the orcs, but I don't want that. Let's fight the battle. Pause the recording here t until the loading screen is finished. See you soon. All right, we're about to enter the battlefield again. We are controlling a siege boat battle. A new power is rising. They will fall. Saruman says different lines each time, which is nice. Uh, start deployment. Yes. Draw your weapon. I believe the weather was good enough. We'll move our force. No, actually we want the uh, siege boat to be a bit away from the enemy because they got slaughtered the last time. Let's see here, we want them to have fired will on to start the battle. Oracle. And fire will. will. The giant army will have shown up already. So in the modern game we can zoom out like this and see everything from above. This wasn't possible in, in the old game. But it's possible in modern Total War games and in the remaster of Rome to the War. Here we have the army. And these guys still have the, the blue skin. Which is uh, still okay but it's not accurate to the movies. They had the uh, pinkish, reddish skin in the movies. But anyway, they still look good. Uh, okay, and... Uh, yeah. Look. Cool. The Urukai Elite armor that I built. I wasted a few turns just to build proper elite army. I didn't want to use the scouts in my first army. I wanted the Urukai elites to be ready to march like in the movies because the, the scouts they were slaughtered at the battle against Aragorn and others, Boromir. Yeah, and uh, the ones that survived were slaughtered by the Royal cavalry later. They marched in the hobbits towards Isengard. They never reached their destination. So the, the real army that actually part in the war was the, the Urukai army. This army. It makes sense to have uh, heavy armor the Urukai. Yeah, it sucks that uh, they can't easily retrain troops and recruit new troops because, you know, they can only recruit them from certain areas. But it's fine. Our 
Urkai Axemen fighting their cavalry here. The sound is nice. Giant army. They are marching towards the village. It's a village because it doesn't have any palisade or wall or anything. There are some pikemen. Yeah, I just find, find the red skin to be more dark. Uh, in essence, they look darker by having red skin. With blue skin, they look a little bit more colorful. But they still have the cool armors and, and uh, still the same unit. So they will just get, have to get used to it, I guess. Yeah, yeah they look really good. These graphics are still way better than they were in the game. I also like that in uh, I also like that in Room to the War that that they uh, have uh, these uh, jumps and such when they attack screams very immersive uh, okay and especially in the remaster so audio settings you can't have it that loud so they got restored to maximum it's too loud have it in, in the middle there Restored after the game crashed, and I restarted it. Yeah, really cool. You can't zoom in like this in the, this in the original war either. So, uh, only in the remaster can we look at the troops this uh, close. And I like looking at troops up close. The so only negative thing here is that we can't control the general in the third person. Like in level 2. But I, I would say that the, 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 the graphics look better here. The only thing missing is the third person mode. I would have loved to be running around as the general in this mode. Especially since this mod has way more heroes than other Rings mods. It's like uh, Eowyn, Golem, and a lot of all the Hobbits and uh, every single character pretty much. Not even to a rich as Golem or Eowyn. And as I said, the good of Sabbath has Arven and a few uh, lesser known heroes. Arven, I think, should really be added if you look exactly like the actor. Still a little bit too loud. My taste. Speech volume. We'll lower this maybe there. So I don't want the music to be too loud. It's only too loud when I'm zoomed in on the units. So if you want to keep an eye on what's happening. See that there is a fight going on here too. See the uh, Urukai axe, axes and axemen and uh, their troops. They routed the pikemen here too. And here we have some Urukai fighting their troops too. The 
basic troops. Yeah, the graphics are a little better in the master. I really like it. I like that it plays like the old game. So it doesn't feel like a modern game in how it plays. One thing I like in the modern games though is all the decapitations and such of models. That's one thing I wish they would have added to this one. In such a way they have uh, beheadings and such. But they should have added such things, I think. They didn't need to keep the old animations. They could have used um, added decapitations. Most of the old animations should have been kept, but uh, they should have added nice little features like uh, a head being severed or an arm getting cut off, etc. I think that would have been good. But not over the top animations like in Warhammer, where they had a lot of unnecessary animations, changes to gameplay, but the uh, killing off moves should have been improved with modern graphics. Cavalry is it charged, he will die. It is charged into the tiny unit. If, uh, I don't know it, who they are, they are elite lancers. I would like to play as a Rowan too, because they have AO in. I liked her model in, in the game. But Isengard is the one I have wanted to play for, for a very long time. The only reason to play the Orillion mode instead of this one is if I want to play one of the factions with the human factions or elven factions or Boron factions with the cool civilian units or if I want if I want to play a stable version if this version is not stable enough, we'll see. I think it is pretty stable when it comes to starting battles, but I'm worried about ending battles. I had a crash when I exited the battle previous video and uh, if that happens too often we might prefer to play the old, old, the old game but uh, I would like to play this one because it has so much better graphics and enhanced features and such so it would be a shame to go back to the old version that version still looks good but nothing like this uh, so I will probably stay with this one if it's stable enough I read somewhere that it will crash like every 10th battle, but that's fine I guess, I could live with that. Everyone has the same problem. The only problem is that it might screw up 5 minutes of the video if it sits the D when I exit the battle. So we might actually end each battle at the end of each... Uh, we might end the, the episode at the end of each battle. Kill the leader. The, the guy, I don't remember his name. The general of the Rohan was killed. Our AI allied army here with the entire army under AI control. They are moving into the settlement. So the AI in Rope War is way better than in Medieval 2. So I suspect it's better here too in the Remaster. They are actually more intelligent. They keep the generals out of harm's way. So it's likely that the generals will survive. Uh, now the enemy general died, but uh, it's less likely that they will die than in Medieval 2 where they suicide the general, the first thing that happens if you place the general under the AI control. But in this game they keep him behind. He can still die if you're unlucky, but it's way more uh, likely they will survive than in Medieval 2. So, so you don't... Uh, it's not... Uh, it's not the same thing as suiciding him to place him under AI control in this uh, in Rogue War and its mods and in Rogue Remastered and Lord Strange Remastered. The AI is actually quite decent in this version and as I like sometimes controlling things uh, strategically and sometimes I just like enjoying the visuals and the battles. I believe they improved the of certain things too, like the force being on two legs like that, for example, it's really good. It happens in the old game too, but it would be way better here. Alright, uh, 
the enemy. When we placed them under AI control, they became a little bit of a mess. They are smart enough to use the crossbowmen. I forgot that uh, in, the, in the vanilla road to war game, usually the crossbowmen are never firing if you place them under AI control. And then they will instead go into the lead with their knives. I don't like that. So I'm happy to see that the AI is decent here with the crossbowmen too. And he's using them from afar like they intended. Otherwise, we would be forced to always manually control the range units. That's the case in Medieval 2 as well. Great units are always uh, used in melee by the AI for some reason. Not always. If they are enemies, they are used decent. But if it's your army, they, they usually end up melee for some reason. Right. <laughs> Wonderful. Good. Without lag, it looks a million times better than the old mod. Even if I do not have the best graphics, let's check, check by the way what graphics I have. Graphics settings. <coughs> so I have uh, graphics full screen unit color scheme. Cause we have, of course, the 1920 1080. P69 resolution, UI size is maximum, used to change that I believe in battles, maybe I should change it, uh, resolution scaling, okay, yeah. um, we'll change the UI. What about these that, uh, details? Uh, building detail is high. Maximum is ultra. So we are playing with high detail and it doesn't lag. And uh, if I play with ultra it will lag because I'm using the older gaming computer from 2009 and streaming it on the better one. So I'm still dependent on the old one's processor. Can't handle ultra without lag but it can handle high. And uh, by using the Windows 7 computer I have a better graphics because this graphics card is a lot better than the old one. So I'm happy with the result. Good graphics, no lag. You don't need ultra. I think high is good enough. It sucks that we can't start the game with Windows 7. And I would have had a better processor for Windows 7 too, I could have played the build. Here is Maur, the general. He is in battle. This is the general, Isengard. Maur. Right. Go on, good job! Soldiers. Good job, Urka. Okay. So. Mauer conquered the village of uh, Ginyard from Rohan and uh, because the game can crash I think we will end it here because otherwise I lose 5 minutes of the video so we'll do the same thing as in Hyrule Total War Classic Ultimate where the game can also randomly crash when we are about to return to the map so we will exit here and uh, I'll see you in the next video, bye